Friends, we read in the first chapter of James that um, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of any kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance and perseverance finishes its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. We have uh, a, a great wall that is surrounding us. It's not just a wall in the front or in the back. It seems like it's all encompassing. It's a wall of um, an anti-Christian oppression that seems to be encroaching more and more every day. Families want to know how do they raise their kids in um, a culture that is so hostile, not just to supernatural faith, but hostile to uh, the basics of natural reason, biology. I think the answer for this is uh, perseverance. It's given to us in the example of the martyrs of Pratulin. And I'd like to share their, uh, their heroic witness with you today. You know, there are so many martyrs in the church and so many saints. People just don't know all of these, uh, the names of these great men and women. Uh, the martyrs of Pratulin fall into that category. They were a group of uh, men, married and unmarried, who gave their lives for Jesus Christ and the union of his church uh, around the year 1873, 74, 75, when the Russians tried to forcibly unite uh, the, the, uh, the Greek Catholics, the Eastern Rite Catholics, to, um, uh, to Orthodoxy. And they, they refused to go along with it. And it's not like they had arms to use or they had government uh, people that they could call in. I mean, the government was opposed to them and the government had arms and these were just peasants. So how do they express their displeasure to this kind of anti-Christian mentality? Is they come out and they bear witness to the truth. Uh, they didn't carry arms with them. They didn't... Uh, you know, threaten violence with violence. They simply embodied our Lord's teaching, where if someone strikes you on the one cheek, you offer them the other as well. Go the extra mile. So what happened is that uh, the Russians, as I said, uh, decided to uh, suppress the Greek Catholics. And this particular diocese was the last uh, Greek Catholic uh, diocese. When I say Greek Catholic, it means Eastern Rite. Uh, the last Greek Catholic diocese on the territory of the Russian Empire, Chelm, C H E L M, and forcibly unite them to uh, the Russian Orthodox Church. When the troops of the Tsar came to this little village, and the village is uh, uh, located in present day Poland, it's uh, if you go between Warsaw and uh, Brest, the largest city in Western Belarus. If you go um, between those two cities, you will get um, uh, close to where this uh, massacre happened. Uh, the name of the town was Pratulin. Now it has a Polish name. So out of the woodwork come these young men and the soldiers come, they're gonna confiscate the church. And then one by one, the men of the village come out and this is a lesson for us. Like, what do you do when the woke mob comes uh, and they, they're, they're threatening their insanity? Uh, do you counter insanity with insanity? Do you counter violence with more violence? Do you shout over them? Well, most people just want to hide. Most people today just pretend that they ignore it away. Uh, well, we know that that doesn't happen. You know, it just magnifies and metastasizes. So these men in uh, Pratulin give us a, uh, an example. Their names, you know, names like many people today, Vincent, Daniel, Lucas, uh, Constantine, Bartholomew, uh, John, Maxim, Michael, they came out to defend their church. This is our church. And we don't care if you come from the czar you're not going to take away that which is most sacred to us. So they came out, some of them 25 years of age, some of them 19 years of age, some of them 50, 
uh, some of them in their 40s, married and, sal- and single. And they stood there and they wouldn't let the troops do the dastardly deed they wanted to do, which was to steal uh, a church of God. And so the, 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 the troops of the Tsar began to open fire. One of the uh, men I really want to propose to you as uh, a beautiful witness is this young man. He was 19 and his name was Anaseti Hritsuk. And he left his house uh, to bring some food and clothing to the men who were um, in front of the church keeping vigil. And when he, he left, he decided to dress in his Sunday best because he said to his mother as he was leaving, you know, Perhaps I too will be worthy to give my life for the faith. And he went to the church, uh, hoping to encourage them, uh, give them some food. And it was there that he met Jesus Christ and became a martyr. You know, we're surrounded today by, as I said, a a wall. Um, It's an oppressive wall, but it's also a wall of uh, indifference. Just when, when people do things that are evil and immoral, uh, there's this wall that just um, seems to envelop you and it's telling you just give in. But these 13 martyrs of Pratulin are examples of how we can live our life. Don't give in to the beast. Be faithful. Persevere. Bear your cross. You may become a martyr, but you, in any case, are going to um, plant a seed of faith in the hearts of the people who are witnessing what happens, and often in the um, hearts of the persecutors themselves. I want to transition and speak uh, about the situation uh, with regard to Russia as well, because this is a lesson to us. You know, if you're a conservative man, um, and you know, in, in God's kingdom, we really don't need these political terms, but they, they come from outside of the church. But it, you know, if you're a traditional guy who believes in the same things that your forefathers believed, you're pretty upset about what's going on in our society today. And I understand that there's a temptation out there to want to gravitate to the first a uh, big guy on the field of life who's going to defend what you want to defend, who's going to uh, speak up and uh, advocate for what you hold dearest. And in the person of um, like Vladimir Putin, it seems that he, he believes what we want to believe and he's going to defend uh, what, what we want to defend. But it's just not true. Um, and these martyrs show us that in, 18, in the mid-1870s, Russia was employing the same tactics then that it's doing today. Uh, it was using force to take over a church and through the church, the conscience of the people. And it wasn't just in 1870. It was during the time of Peter the Great. It was during the time of Catherine the Great. Uh, during the time of the czars of the 1900s, as we just heard about the case of the 13 martyrs in Pritulin. It was true during the case of uh, Stalin, throughout the Stalin years, that the the Russian authorities would use force to liquidate and destroy uh, the Eastern Catholic churches. Why? Because they posed a threat, a threat to their people, that their people would be free. You see, the Russian Orthodox Church has long uh, been under the control of the Tsar. You look at what uh, Peter the Great did, is that he abolished the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the Russian Orthodox Church's administrative structure, and he created a lay-led synod uh, to control it. And we see this throughout um, uh, you know, the 20th century, that when the godless communists came to power in Russia, uh, they used that same mentality uh, to control the church. Because if you can control the church, you can control the minds and hearts of the people who follow the church. 
the Ukrainian or the Greek Catholic Church was a particular threat because its form, its ritual, its externals, its spirituality, its liturgy are all from the same tradition as Russian Orthodoxy. But this church was independent. It wouldn't take its marching orders from the Tsar or from whoever <clears throat> was heading up the power offices in the Kremlin. On the whole, the Greek Catholic Church was a stellar church because it kept at the forefront the mandate that Christ gave to teach and to sanctify and to govern. Uh, whereas the Russian Orthodox Church leadership, not the people, but the Russian Orthodox leadership uh, fell under the sway of administrative um, fiat from uh, the czars. For this reason, uh, the Russians have time and again sought to liquidate and destroy uh, the Eastern Catholics. Now, if you're a Roman Catholic, you have Roman Catholic dioceses and Roman Catholic churches in, uh, in Russia, uh, but you don't have that same courtesy extended uh, to the Greek Catholics. And it's not because we're, member, we're spies of the Vatican or we're spies of NATO or anything like that. It's simply because uh, we pose a threat to uh, the hegemonic ideology of the Kremlin. We serve Jesus Christ and we will not allow uh, the Church of Christ to be prostituted out, to be pimped out to, um, uh, to political powers uh, like Vladimir Putin. So this is a lesson to us uh, that the Church is independent. The Church exists to save souls and this same independent spirit should be manifest not just in her priests and bishops but most especially in her laymen you guys who hold the faith don't wait for someone to come and tell you uh, how to defend the faith just do it and perhaps on your lips will be found these words perhaps I too will be worthy to give my life for the faith holy martyr Anasit, Hritsyuk, and all the 13 martyrs of Pratulin pray to God for us.